from Diddle Arena in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's a night of Sunbelt Conference basketball. It's the mean green of North Texas visiting Western Kentucky in the Hilltoppers. Well, this is the opening Sunbelt Conference game of the year for Western Kentucky, and they take on a much improved North Texas. George Plaster and the coach, Clem Haskins, to bring you the play-by-play -play story. Clem, North Texas a whole lot better than what we saw a year ago. This team has really improved. I tell you what, last game out, they put 97 points on the board. When you're scoring like that and shooting a clip at 47% from the field, it's a very good ball club. And we've got a couple of players we want you to know about. We'll begin with the visitors. Keith Wooden, a tough guy inside. Tough guy inside. It's going to be an interesting matchup with him and Evans tonight. Tennessee found out last Saturday how good Jeremy Evans can be. Young freshman did well for Western Kentucky. Had a double-double down there against Tennessee. You know, had uh, 10 rebounds and 13 points. So, you know, 6-6 six, six from the field. This young man is really playing well. And now you ask, where are Clem's keys to the game? Well, they've been hermetically sealed. We now open them. Right. we got to defend the high-low. Westman must defend the high-low situation tonight. They really they try to get the ball high and try to throw it in low side. And also boxing out. This is a very good rebounding ball club. They've got to do a good job of boxing out. And also this team here got to contain the dribble. They do a good job of penetrating and taking the ball to the basket. And all of this may be easier said than done. As we take a look at the starting lineups, you'll notice that North Texas is without Kendrick Davis. He was their leading scorer a year ago. He'll be out another three or four weeks. And no matter how you slice it, Clem, that's a big loss. That's a big loss. Anytime you take 18 points out of your lineup and a veteran player is a senior, that's going to hurt this, this team tonight. On Western side, most of you who have seen this team know the story. Courtney Lee, as good a player as the Sun Belt Conference has got, has scored in double figures each of the last 12 games. The supporting cast, as you can see, very, very young, but getting a whole lot better. We mentioned in the open, this is the Sun Belt Conference opener for Western Kentucky. It's a tough North Texas. We'll find out more when we come back. This is Western Kentucky basketball. Back here at Diddle Arena, we're about ready for the opening tip off. Let's take a look at the two coaches for this game. That's Johnny Jones, a 1985 graduate of LSU. He missed by a year of playing on Dale Brown's Final Four team that finished eighth in the regular season but ended up in the big dance. Darren Horn, a sparkling record in his four years at Western Kentucky. The officials for tonight are Larry Rose, Mark Whitehead, and Kyle Neve. Crowd of around 5,000 is here. A lot of the students are home for the Christmas break, as you might imagine, but despite that, this is going to be a good game. This is going to be an up-tempo game. Both of these teams shoot very well, and the opening tap is won by Western. Lee out of the corner, misses the first shot of the game, and North Texas clears. They are the mean green out of Denton, Texas. They're seven and three on the year, and really shooting the ball extremely well. Both teams come in the game shooting extremely well, like you say. They're both are shooting over 40% from the threes and better than 45% uh, overall field goal percentage. So both of them are excellent shooting ball clubs. That double team trap almost caused a turnover. Anytime there's going to see a uh, ball screen, you're going to see the hilltop is going to double the all ball screen tonight and we'll jump that. This is one of the strengths inside for North Texas. Two different point blank tries by Wooden. That's a good uh, post-up play there. That's going to be the problem here. We're at a high and low situation tonight. The top is going to do a good job of defending that. They turn one inside, but they're able to defend and not get up get a bucket. Rogers makes it 2 nothing early as he gets inside the paint. Tie inserted into the starting lineup about 30 minutes before game time. Sturms will get a pair at the line. Weston come out with full court man-to-man -man pressure. You see that time to put the ball on the floor. They meet the toppers the hold on the drive and, and pick up a foul. Michael Sturms out of Fort Worth averaging 16 points and four rebounds per game. This is a team that we saw in early February here in Western blew them out 97 to 72. And I'm told that there's been a real transformation under Johnny Jones. They're, they're a whole lot better than that team. 
West team is much better here. I would say they've improved on the defense in the court more than any place else, I would say, here. And plus, they've been together. They're a lot older, uh, a lot more experienced. They're playing three juniors and two seniors. And so this is a very experienced ball club here. And they shoot the ball much, much better than they did this time last year. Western is coming off a loss in Knoxville against Bruce Pearl's balls. Joyner misses the three wooden and one of his teammates fight for the rebound. If you look at North Texas, they're big and they look physical up front. Very big and strong. Here's a situation here, the high-low we talked about in a pregame show here. They're going to have to do a good job of defending here. They did an excellent job of getting the ball. They'll call it down the gut. They call it jump ball here. With top of it, a good job collapsing and not giving up an easy bucket. Possession arrow will stay with the visitors. But you're right, that was a very good high-low. They just didn't convert. A minute and a half in, good to have all of you with us all over the country. I'm told my buddy Will Perdue is watching us tonight in Louisville, and Will has become a very successful broadcaster as well, part of the Orlando Magic television team. Will was a great player at Vanderbilt University many years ago under tutelage of uh, Coach Newton and also uh, Ed Martin, and I uh, want to wish him the best. Joiner tried to back down but then made a bad pass and Wooden recovers the turnover. Here come the mean green. The result is the slam for Stearns. That's the transition. Top is going to do a good job of getting back. If this team can take the ball to, to the basket, you can see with the best of them. Brazelton, about an eight-foot jumper. That's a tough shot because that's sort of that in-between range. That's a tough shot to make off the drive, like, it, like you said, in-between jumpers. And that's something players nowadays don't make that shot out of seven, eight-foot jump shot off the drive. If Bell had that one to do over again, he would have thrown it up to the big men, not give him the bounce pass. Will Perdue would tell me that if he were here. That's right. A big guy likes to have it up around the rim, at least up chest high so he can handle the basketball. Those guys around the ankle hard for those big guys, 6'10", 7 foot, to handle that ball that low. Western by one early. And here's Courtney Lee, who has been the model of consistency, has led this team in scoring the last four games and has been in double figures, 11 straight nights. Shot clock's down to three. Lee will let it fly. Here comes Watson the other way. He misses inside, and Rogers, who may have gotten fouled, gets the rebound. Western numbers, Evans the finish. I tell you what, that's a great lob there. Anytime a big guy like Evans gets behind the defense like that, he's so long and rangy. And that's a great pass there, but a, a great player, and Quentin Lee to find him and get the lob for the dunk. That plays a lot easier when they can get off the ground. No doubt about it when <laughs> big guys not land on you like that. So. Uh, Evan get behind traffic like that. Guys on him, he can make that shot and make that dunk. We've got some guys on both sides tonight that'll play this above the rim. Watson is one of them. Nice step back. Nice step back there. We got a little push off there to get that clearance, get that jump shot there. That could have been an offensive foul as well as getting the clearance, getting that jump shot. That's but his first two on a 16 point average. Good back cut. Rogers called for traveling. I tell you what, that's a good back cut right there. And it was a great basketball play, though, to find him with a nice balance pass, and he just happened to walk, got extra few steps for, for a turnover. For those of you who are seeing Western Kentucky for the first time, they'll do this a lot. A lot of full court pressure. A lot and of full court pressure. They like to play up tempo. You know, they want to get scored up in 75 to 80 points they can. Boy, that was a nice defensive play by Courtney Lee. Bell. Lucky to retrieve, and offensive foul is the call, and again, a big man stuck in kind of an awkward position. That's right, count the basketball a little out of control right there. You find it talk to a lot of scrambling, but they get, they get the bottle in front of you and take that charge. That time, Jordan got over and got his shoulder squared up to pick up a charge. One thing about Courtney Lee, you can find this guy's a great offensive player, but he just is valuable to the top of anybody on the defense end. He plays great half-court defense. Number 32 here is Courtney Lee for the top of Lee gets into the lane and has that one taken away. That time, his unselfishness may have hurt him a little bit. Stearns for three. Boy, that one's way off. That was kind of a scud. 
Brazelton. He didn't know the man was behind him. <laughs> and Williams had an easy block. Had an easy block that time. He was trailed him. And that time you got to have the quarter awareness. Had a high-low situation there. I could see it coming all the way. Big guy here. You missed the layup, but there's a great pass. Stearns gets his fifth point. But, Clem, you're right. The high-low is going to be something Western's going to see a lot tonight. Going to see a lot tonight. And also that mismatch there. So they got to do a good job of coming over and keeping a lot of pressure on the basketball at the high post to try to help the guy out at the low post. In the early going, you can see a little bit of why North Texas is better. They're better, as you mentioned, defensively. Everybody will look to the shooting percentage, but it's on this end of the floor that they've gotten quite a bit better. A lot better on the defense in the court, yes. Courtney Lee found that out with the shot clock inside of 10. Wooden the steal. Williams gets into the paint. Boy, a no call there. Johnny Jones furious that it was a no call and we'll have our first dead ball timeout. It comes about five and a half minutes in. North Texas, the early one point lead. This is Fox College Sports. Well, in the state of Kentucky, as a lot of you know, they start basketball fans very, very early. North Texas, the early one point lead, Clem. One of the things that's got Darren Horn excited is the play of this young freshman. Well, young freshman really playing well. When you don't put bot on him like that, once you get behind traffic like that, a nice lob here by Lee, he can run out and get these dunks. It's a nice alley-oop pass there for a nice layup and a nice dunk for two points for the toppers. Evans had, and I don't know if this is the right term or not, breakthrough night in Knoxville Saturday at 13 points against a very physical University of Tennessee team. On the road, too, at that, and he was 6-6 six six from the field. So, you know, he had a really good offensive night, you know, with 13 points and 10 big rebounds, which is a very good game for him on the road against a good physical ball club, like you said, Tennessee. Western has a whole new unit in with the exception of Ty Rogers, and he lets fly and buries the three. Yeah, the top is going to play a lot of people. They're going to play 10 to 12 guys tonight, and you see they're coming in with four new guys here, and there's a nice bucket here but Ty Rogers, excellent three-point shooter. Howerton, who just checked into the game, missed from about two feet. And then Orlando Mendez Valdez stepped right on the sideline. And Darren Horn looking at him saying, what's that all about? Get into the game. Well, you know, I just don't understand today. That happens so much. Uh, young players today, I call it court awareness. Be aware of where you're at on the court at all time. And so many young guys do step out of bounds today. For whatever reason, I don't quite understand that. But that did happen. Good call. Mean Green running their offense. Bell gives them the lead back. That's a nice curl off there for a double there. Came off the baseline, off a nice downstream for, for a nice bucket. Ben Bell out of Irving, Texas. Irving is where the uh, Dallas Cowboys holding the roof stadium is. Rodgers again, not this time. You know, has a good look there for him, a good shot. He can knock those threes down. They haven't missed that one, so, you know, that's the kind of shot you want him to take, though. Pretty good baseline drive, but then maybe one step too far. And I've always thought that's got to be one of the difficult things, Clem, for a player to know is what's too much and what's the right amount when you penetrate. Right, that is out of control. But you know, one thing I'd like to see is get in college, I like the NBA th there, is that dotted line there. So it can take it out of the official's hand if there's a, really a charge or whatever. So if we get that in college, we definitely would know. And there, that's kind of questionable in that situation also. So that was a good call and perhaps, but again, I'd like to see that dotted line put in college. Emerson, the second fake was a good one. He missed the shot. And here comes North Texas running. They don't take a whole lot of time, do they? Not like a lot of time. That was a nice shot there off the break. He missed it. They look again, high-low situation. He missed it, but he got to get it back. Going for the dunk. Williams at point-blank range gives North Texas a three-point lead. Rodgers to tie. Rodgers got two real good looks. He happened to miss them. You know, he won for three from three, but the three, two shots he missed, they're really good looks for him. So those type of shots you want him to take. A year ago at this point in the game here, North Texas was a, down about 15 and struggling just for life. They're struggling for life, but you can see here, just a good shooting ball club. They're strong, they're in, 
on the defense in the court, and they've taken the ball to the basket. And that's the key, though. They're getting the ball inside, whether it was a drive or down the gut for high-low situation, getting high percentage shot. That was a good move by Calvin Watson. He's got four. He's always played well against Western. And, and to take that just a little bit farther, Calvin Watson, in his years in Denton, Texas, averaging 17 points and shooting almost 70% against Western. Visitors have to feel pretty good right now. They lead by five here in Bowling Green. Well, if that big guy could play in the paint tonight, Clem, I think Darren Horn would use him yes, because that's, that's what this whole thing is going to revolve around. It's going to be all about who wins the battle in the low post tonight. You're correct on that. You know, offensively, taking the ball to the basket or posting up low and down the gut, however you get the ball inside, but it's going to want, be one at, at the low post tonight. You're right. Ty Rogers out of Eddyville, Kentucky, with five points in the early going. This is a North Texas team, very physical inside. They take it right at you. They've had a couple of high lows that they haven't converted, or the lead would be even bigger. It'd be even bigger, you're right. They've missed a lot of, I call bunnies in there with the high-low situation. But I think now they got the 21 in there. Uh, Boris Siakam will make a difference. Also, if uh, Emerson can start to bang a little bit, get some inside, it may make a difference. This is a game that Daniel's ability to bang could be really important. Good free throw touch to get the lead back within three. Mean Green, the five nothing advantage in the turnovers and the points that come off those. Colin Mangrum has checked into the game and he gets it to Young. Thompson come out in really aggressive half court man to man defense here. They push him out of the offense a little more and really create a little more pressure on the defense and see what's going to happen here. Nice Bell, pass. Where Mangrum gets himself the bucket, a good assist. Mangrum was in amongst the trees for his first field goal. Did a nice job of driving the ball down the gut, passed it low post and knocked it down for a nice bucket. Emerson shows you some range that I have not seen before. The long ball gives him five. That's a nice bucket for a big guy with a nice, a lot of nice touch step on sides, hitting the three. Again. Yeah. There's that high-low you've been talking about. Wooden had great position inside. He had great position inside. He got weak side help, man. Must get there right away. And, and the key, though, to help there is really more, more ball pressure. They got to keep more pressure on the basketball to help the guy to low post to create a more of a lob so to give the defense the weak side chance to get there to help out. Emerson will have his hands full with these big guys. He commits his first foul. Keith Wooden's a kid who grew up right in the shadows of the University of Kansas campus in Lawrence, Kansas. Chose instead to go to Denton, Texas. Well, he's a fine-looking young prospect, I tell you. He's going to give Coach Joan the, the strength inside he's looking for this year. And where they're playing now, they're going to be very difficult to deal with throughout the season. Reed Mustafa into the game for Western Kentucky. Where's number 35? That's Lee. Missed on the three. Western early, not able to convert on the long ball, and Young beat everybody back. That's a shot he'd love to have back because it's about as high percentage as you can get. He got down the court, got a little too far in the basket, and lost control, and kind of lost his balance, and he missed an easy shot. Probably a good no call there as Mustafa did a little bit of an acting job. Wooden his third point. North Texas's lead is five. And Siakam, a nice baseline jumper. Nice drive there off the high post and pull up. Shot a nice six to eight foot jump shot on the baseline. Nice move by Siakam. That's encouraging that both he and Emerson, who will have to play big tonight, have scored early. Stearns with kind of a wild shot got his own rebound. This is really aggressive ball club, strong around the offensive board. And I tell you what, once the shot go up, top is going to do a better job of putting their body on them, keeping them off the offensive glass. Because right now they're really a double rebound against the topper so far. A.J. Slaughter, young freshman out of Shelbyville, Kentucky, into the game for Western Kentucky. And they'll get the ball back. It was last touched. 
by the Mean Green. A little more than midway through the first half here at Diddle Arena. Western Kentucky down nine in an important stat rebounding, but much more importantly, down three on the scoreboard. Brazelton missed the shot, and it was last touched by North Texas. By well, A.J. Slaughter getting there and, and putting some pressure on him, he forced him to knock the ball out of bounds, but they reversed the call and giving it to North Texas, I think it's the right call. So yep. they reversed the call. Good call. One of the things in the early going, Courtney Lee scoreless the first ten and a half minutes of the game. And you know Western won't allow it to stay that way much longer. Yeah. To be down only down three points and not him scoring in the buckets so far. And also Rogers one for three and had two uh, three real good looks. And that's it very encouraging for the toppers. One of the things you notice here and you saw it in that foul. They run a lot of pick and roll. A lot of pick and rolls. And anytime they have a pick and roll like that, you can see the toppers gonna come out and double that. And the key though, they must rotate over real quick to really take that easy pass away. And also from that situation, from that to high low, because they're gonna try to stick it inside after they make that first pass. They inbounds to Calvin Watson. He goes right down low to Wooden. And Siakam did a good job against that. Ingram. Long three, Wooden missed from point blank range, to say the least. Western dodged a bullet. They dodged a bullet there, but I tell you what, it's physical play inside, and Siakam is really battling inside there. He needs some help. Slaughter called for traveling, and that's turnover number five in the early going. Jeremy Evans back into the game for Darren Horn, for Mustafa. Crowd very quiet early. They have not had a whole lot to get into. Stearns forced that shot, but lived to tell about it. He'll get a pair. Well, he kind of forced it into the defense there, and the defense man had his hands up. For, uh, uh, that could have been a jump ball, but again, officials uh, decided to make a Call a foul, so that was a tough call on the defense. Stearns with Kendrick Davis out, and, and let's kind of get into that for just a second. Kendrick Davis was a first-team preseason all Sun Belt, has been out and will be out about six to seven weeks, suffered a hand injury in mid-November, and that's one of the things you've got to be impressed with, Clem, is the fact that when they lost kind of their leader, they didn't fall apart. They didn't fall apart. He's a key guy, and again, it's credit to Coach Davis and his staff doing a wonderful job, keep his team together. And this team is playing excellent basketball to come in here with a record like this, I believe seven and three. And they're playing excellent basketball in the game. They lost uh, last game by in a double overtime. So this is a very, very good ball club here. They're playing excellent basketball, and, and they're playing great team basketball. They have not shown the hangover from their double overtime loss in New Orleans. They're up five on the road. An aggressive man-to-man -man by North Texas. Brazelton got fouled by Bell, who knew it. I don't think it's a shooting foul. Not shooting foul. I hit him on the, well, he's on the floor, driven to basketball. He got hit about three. Got hit about three times going to basketball behind, and, and the two big guys also creating him on each side, the left and the right side. So. That was a tough drive. So Western will get a new 35, and there, Slaughter is called for traveling. A little bit of concern on Darren Horn's face. This is good half-court defense on uh, North Texas State uh, part here. They're doing a good job of pressing the top is into forcing some turnovers at present time. Now the top will come out in half-court trap here themselves. Boy, that's a long three. That's an NBA three there. That was from downtown, they say. Michael Stearns has nine, and as quick as you can say, he has nine. Western responds with two of their own. Evans, a chance at a three-point play. We'll find out when we come back. In the early going, North Texas 24, Western Kentucky 18. 
You know, Clem, I made kind of a dumb comment earlier about having never seen Daniel Emerson hit a three before. He stroked one two or three minutes ago. Look at the stat sheet. It's his fourth of the year. That's his fourth of the year. You see he pops out here, leading to the nice job of finding him in the corner. He has a nice touch for a great guy here. You can see here, that guy can really stroke it. Anytime the ball comes through the net like that, it don't even move like I tell you. He has a really nice cover touch for a jump shooter. Now here is the key story of the game in the early going. Clem, is it simply that he's been a little cold or has North Texas done anything to create that? Well, you got to give North Texas State a lot of credit. They've done a good job of trying to take the ball out of his hand. They double him quite a bit and really keep a close eye on him, not giving him a lot of good open looks. But also, he's missed three or four good shots. He usually misses the open three. He had three or four really good looks. And he's got to become a little more offensive-minded and uh, probably take over and not say force thing, but it could be more creative on offense when he gets the basketball and probably look for a shot a little more. Tyrone Brazelton's second foul, and so he's going to come out of the game. Good piece of coaching there by Darren Horn, not to let him get a third one here uh, in the early going. Well, you can see this is the type of game the Toppers want to. They want to keep an up-tempo game. See, they're pressing here. They come out full court, man-to-man -man pressure again because they're going to play 10, 11 guys, and they want to try to wear them down here. A little run and jump, half court defense here. They leave and a guy watching for wide open three because he misses it. That one was about halfway down. Tough break for the senior. Mendez Valdez, again, missed the three. I say that. Western has not shot the threes very well tonight. In fact, I'll look at the old Not really at all. Here. That's an open shot. Roger had three good looks, and that was a good look there. But Mendez just time. So, you know, they've had about seven really good looks from three, and they missed them. And so you figured it. They started making those three. They read back in the basketball game. Stearns has 13 of their 27. And he has been on fire. Last touched by North Texas. Michael Stearns was not in the original starting lineup that we were given and was inserted into that lineup about 20 minutes before game time. We got the word. Lee, you can forget the shutout. Courtney, his first bucket of the night. And you know what? I'll bet you it's not his last. No one will be his last. As long as he makes some buckets here, see this game here to get him, he can get him right back in the basketball game. And so this is anybody game yet. A lot of time to go in the game. Watson missed from about eight feet. Hilltoppers run. Lee buries the three. Lee gives Western a 5 nothing run to get back within three. Now North Texas. They're not in any position here to say, boy, we're just going to kind of milk the clock a little bit. They kind of run right back at you. No, because the top wants this type of game. They want an up and down game, up tempo game, because they're going to play a lot of players, and they feel like over the time they can word uh, uh, the green wave down. So this type of game they want. That pass was intended for one of the folks operating our cameras. Well, he anticipated right there the man go back door. He didn't yeah. cut back door. So really, you, you fault the passer, but a young man here that was not communicating with the two of those guys. They go back door, perhaps to get a really good look for back door layup. So now you've gotten Lee kind of off the schneid. Does this make it easier for everybody else? It makes it easy for everybody else. Your horse must, must you know, continue to, to give you the points and things that you're looking for out of him. And, and when he gets going, it makes it easy for everyone else. He's got five points now, so everybody else will get on track. Shot clock's down to 12. Whatever the play is, Orlando Mendez Valdez gave it the fist. Clock's down to two. They got to move in a hurry. Slaughter banked it in. He couldn't do that. Clem, if he tried it a hundred times. Well, you know, that's a shooter's touch right there. Guys like that, though, can make buckets of good shoes. They find a way to make those kind of shots. It's hard to explain it, but brick throws never get those kind of bounces. Those things do. Boy, I like Watson's step back. He didn't hit the shot. But he's a good-looking athlete. Emerson ran the floor well, but then missed on the easy layup. I tell you what, that was a great catch there and a great finish, though. You know, it takes a good player, a good athlete with great hands to catch that ball and get a shot off in that situation. And, you know, in fairness, I didn't describe that very well because the difficulty of the catch made the shot a whole lot harder. Yes, sir. He did a great job just to catch the ball and get the shot off. Watson. Dribbled it off his foot out of bounds. And so the 8 nothing run that Western Kentucky is on gives them a chance 
for their first lead in a while. You know, we haven't said anything about the bench, though. See, this is great bench play. They actually got four, uh, three star, uh, three guys coming in here, uh, Mendez and Emerson, and also uh, Slaughter, really the key to getting them back in the basketball game. That's what a good bench is all about. And, Clem, it's interesting you bring that up because part of North Texas's seven and three start, they're attributing to their bench. They've had six different wins where their bench has outscored the other team's bench by 10 or more. That's right. That's the key. You know, if you really want to go deep in the NCAA tournament and have a chance to go to postseason play, if you want to play up-tempo game, pressure defense, you've got to have nine to ten guys to play. The days only playing five or six guys are over to have good ball clubs. All top team teams, top 30 teams in the country are going to play anywhere from seven to ten guys every night. I would love to tell you I know exactly what the officials are looking at. I don't know. Now, now, I, now I do know. They're looking to see. They're looking to see the last uh, probably bucket. If it's a three-pointer by Slaughter, which he kisses off the glass, I believe it was a three. I'm not 100 percent sure, but it looked like he was behind the three-point line. From the vantage point we had there, it looked like he had the foot behind it. Now let's take a second look foot behind it well he may have been on the line like there he <laughs> go back and look at it again it looked like he was on the line I believe his left foot was on the line I don't know if, I don't know if they're gonna take it away from him or not I can't I don't know if there's enough evidence on the monitor to, to justify taking it away but it's awful close okay they're gonna say it was a three Johnny Jones had kind of a funny look when the official told him, well, I guess you did your best. Go on and call the game. Lee off the screen. Had trouble. If he'd been able to, to grab it in the he, first go round, it might have been, it might have gotten him a bucket. If he'd have handled that cleat clean, he'd have probably went in for a layup. He just could not pick it up off the initial pass, and he kind of fumbled the basketball and gave a defense chance to catch up, and that's why that play did not uh, work as smooth as it, as it could have. So it'll go back to North Texas. This is a bunch different than what we saw a year ago out of North Texas. They were just not a very good basketball team. They have really straightened their act up tremendously really this is a good ball club here playing hard playing together and here's a good defense play here uh, Evans get there a little bit late to knock the pass down and call the foul but again that's aggressive play on his part but he picked up a foul good call by the official Harold Stewart out of Fort Worth they'll rule it not a shooting foul and so a new 35 for the mean green Bell offensive foul he put the elbow into him that time. He kind of ducked his shoulder into the young man, pushed off, tried to clear some daylight for the jump shot, and that was a good call but efficient. So that's two fouls early on Ben Bell in Western for the second time. A chance to retake the lead. Mendez Valdez can't get it to go. And here comes Watson running. Watson from 10. That one was a little bit too strong and probably not his best effort. Outlet up ahead, knocked out of bounds by Bell, and we will have a timeout, and it comes with 3.52 remaining in the half. We started out tied, we're still tied. This is the Hilltopper Sports Satellite Network. But the last dead ball timeout, we told you Courtney Lee had not scored in the game. Clint, you knew that wouldn't take long to get fixed. Without a doubt, you know, anytime you have a guy that's averaging 20, almost 20 points a basketball game and you lead the score, just amount of time he's going to get on the track. And uh, he's come back, hit five big points, get us back in the basketball game. And of course, you have almost four, more, four, four minutes to go in the half. He's going to probably get a few more points this half. And before it's over, he'll have his numbers. That, those numbers you see there, a little storm cloud goes up for North Texas because they have really been bragging about how their bench has gotten so much done for them. But Western equally if not more deep than North Texas. Eight nothing run has gotten Western forged into the tie and Stearns with the body. 
commits the personal. And that will put Western in the bonus. That's two fouls on Stearns. He's got to be careful not to pick up a third. Well, he's playing offensively. That's really hurt them if you get in foul trouble. You got two, like you say. So last three minutes here, you got to really be careful not to get that third foul in this first half. Brazelton missed the free throw. Watson from around Lexington. Oh, he hit that all the way from Texas. You're right, boy, I tell you. Lexington, Texas, I tell you. That was a long way from here. <laughs> Didn't know there was a Lexington, Texas. But I tell you what, it sounded good. It? Did it sound better, do you? <laughs> but that was a long way. Make a long story short, it was a long way. It was downtown. It was a long shot. But Weston opened up in 1-3-1, I tell you what. He just the heck with it. And let's also say this is Lee. Let Boy, he has just not had any luck at all. The ball Tonight. was around the rim. It just didn't fall for him. You know, great touch. You know, it was just there, but he's not falling. Can, can we say this for Watson? He's not afraid to pull up. If it's past midcourt, he's likely to pull up. He'll pull up and fire, and I tell you what, he has unlimited range. Pretty good double-team trap, and it was last touched by Courtney Lee. That was a good trap. You use the... Uh, the in line is sort of the third man in that trap. That's right. That's right. That sideline out of bounds over there with the third man uh, kept you double team at basketball. So you had three guys on the ball that time. You're correct. North Te Look at Watson. Shot that one from Cincinnati. That reminds me of a guy used to call downtown Freddie Brown. I tell you what, Freddie Brown's really live tonight. I tell you what, he hit two of them way downtown. Exactly what is his range? Probably. Unlimited. 30 feet and in. And his team is back up six. Emerson on the block. That bucket will not count, or at least I don't think it will. I tell you what, I make the coach feel good, though. He needs some low, po low post present. I got the ball inside, and Emerson decided to take the ball to the basket, and that's what's been missing for the top. They need somebody to develop inside game, and so I'm sure the coaching staff are glad to see him take that ball to the basket. Tell you what, the, uh, to the, the group down in the truck, we need to rack up those two threes on Calvin Watson because those are major league six feet kind of stuff behind that line. There's at least 35 to 36, 37 foot shots. It was a long shot. Daniel Emerson, seven points in the first half, and he gets his team back within four. Nearly a steal. Quick hands by Rodgers. I'm surprised they didn't give Emerson a look right there. I mean, he passed the basketball, he charged into him, and I'm surprised they didn't try to call that. So they didn't give him any look and any sympathy at all of that. But get him in over there, take that charge. Courtney Lee guarding Watson. And Courtney's saying, anything this side of Cleveland, Ohio, I've got to be right on him. Shot clock to 12. Stearns on the floor, and it's on Western Kentucky. They go with 32, Courtney Lee, and that's his first. And now that's 17 fouls against Western. So from here on in, both teams will shoot the bonus here in the first half. You can see why this team is really winning basketball games. You can see if you overplay them, they have the ability to put the ball on the floor to take it to hold. Before that, they shot two long threes, which he made two of them in a row. And now he takes out to take the ball to the basket and draw a foul. So then at the free throw line, now he's making free throws. So this is why this team is 7-3 at the present time and playing excellent basketball. Boy, he finally missed one. He's got 14 in the first half. And from behind, he commits a third foul. This is a critical foul, and his coaches were letting him hear it because that was a dumb third foul. Here's a kid that has been... Lighting it up, gets two fouls, and Clem, he's got to know that that can't be the third one. Well, see, a lot of times, you know, fans and players want to play. And that's why you coaches sometimes, you take guys out because they can't play with two fouls. Now, all of a sudden, now, he's going to be relaxed and don't want to play as hard as aggressive after you get that third foul. And that's why you take guys out. And sometimes fans question, why do you take him out? Let him play through it with two fouls. And that's why you take a guy out with three or four minutes to go and not let him pick up a third foul. Boy, if he's got to pick up the third, 
it can't be a, a, a cheapy like that. Not like that. No, it's not a heady call. You're correct on that. But, you know, players let the emotion sometime in the game uh, get carried away. And that time he got his emotion. He was so excited about guard and trying to come up with a steal that he got a little too aggressive and picked up a third foul. So here's the full court pressure. There's the baseball pass. And even Watson couldn't handle that one. Well, that's a, a, a year ago, by the way, that timeout would have been given to him. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. You're on top of it. That's why you're the pro. <laughs> And you know what, that's right. I'm so glad he did away with that call. I hate to see that call like that because the guy, no way that he can make that play. Okay, so uh, I'm glad he would not let him make that call. So I'm glad he did with that call. Rogers slipped on a wet spot and Joyner almost was able to come up with it. And it is Western's ball and for the life of me, I have no idea how. That's one, that's one you cannot draw up on that board. <laughs> Neither do I. I tell you what, that was, you got to give Joyner credit for staying after oh, basketball yeah. and the hustle. So all the credit go to Joyner, really fighting in there. Neither do I. I don't know how he came up with it, but credit go to Joyner for making that play. So, Clem, when you look around, you know Western is going to be there in the east. They're going to be up near the top of this thing. But all of a sudden, this North Texas bunch showing us tonight that in, in the west, you better be careful with them. This team here is a very good team. They're going to be in it all year long, and you can see here. Now look at one of those long three. He shot that thing out of the uh, out of the, about the third row back there. Now look at this. Look how far back this is. You know what's amazing about it? Though, he shot it with a lot of touch on it. The oh. ball don't even hit the rim. You know, shot he, it with ease. You know, he no strain at all. Shot it like he thought he was going to make He's it. He's going to make it. That's right. Great touch, and he shot it like he was shooting a layup. You know, which was unbelievable. Now, somewhere in practice, he Johnny Jones has seen enough of that that he's given him the green light to let it fly. Oh, yes, he can make that shot. You know, Coach would even, uh, he would say, no, no, no. He would just relax, but he knew he could make that shot. He two in a row. So the first one, he came back and hit two shots in a row from the same spot. So, no, that's within his range. And that last one extended within about a foot of that big emblem at midcourt. I didn't want to jinx Danny, but before that, he'd hit about three, four, I believe four free throws in a row. Yep. And he really, really looked good on his shot tonight. So, unfortunately, he missed that free throw, but he was looking good on his free throws, whether his jump shots tonight. And that big guy shoots with an excellent touch. He's got good rotation on his free throws. And there's the steal. And hands by Watson. Knock it out of bounds. North Texas continuing their good shooting tonight. Five of nine from long range. And that's one of the reasons they've led throughout most of this first half. Final 80 seconds of the first half. George Plaster, Coach Clem Haskins with you from Diddle Arena. High screen from Emerson. He gets it down low and a jump ball and the possession arrow will stay with the home team. They've got 14 on the clock, and they have to realize that in a hurry. Good ball movement. Brazelton called for traveling. Might have been better off shooting the three. Yes, he just shot the three there, and he caught the basketball. And uh, we had about uh, had about five of those tonight. Uh, they want to get to the basket so quick they take off running with the basketball before they put it down. Mangrum throws it away. And let me tell you part of the reason why, because he met about three different folks with white jerseys as he got about 40 feet. That was a pressure was coming, you know. Had a double team and had another guy running at him. They doubled the basketball, called a little run and jump, a half court, three quarter length of court. It sounded like a herd of cattle they from where we are. Oh, man. Rogers for the lead. Couldn't get the roll. Emerson fought for the rebound, but Stewart came out of there, and then somebody, I think it was Ruffin, stepped on the end line. Jared Ruffin didn't realize quite where he was. But Emerson caught that rebound. He came off the rebound. He got grabbed on the arm, too. He got to learn to get really tough and a little with that basketball so guys get away from him when he get it. So he got hit on the arm, but uh, he was a little too nice at the rebound. 
Brazelton went right to the bucket. Western trying to get a two for one before the half, and that may well be what happens. Ruffin picks up his second foul in a matter of about 10 seconds. This is Tyrone Brazelton, junior college transfer from Park Forest, Illinois. And that's one of the things he'll want to work on during that Christmas break because the point guard is going to handle the ball a lot. And late in the game, you want one who can hit his free throws. Make his free throw. This is the second time he's been up there. He's missed all his free throws tonight. You know, before that, he's up front there and missed one and one before that. So. He's old for whatever free throw line tonight. So correct. You got to be able to step up the line, and make free throws. What you saw there was a lane violation on the second free throw. In North Texas, they go baseball pass to Bell, and he lays it in. Nice pass. Ben Bell does the rest. Brazelton has it swatted away, and here they come running. And they're going to take the final shot or at least they're going to attempt to with a four-point lead. At about 10 seconds, they'll really start to crank it. Bell, good hands by Slaughter. Can he beat the clock? Apparently he can. Bell committed a dumb foul, and that's his third. It's a dumb foul because it will give Western two free throws before the half. Before the half, you know, that's the thing that you coaches, you just really eat your heart out right there with a chance to go in with at least a four-point lead, perhaps with a six-point lead. Now you're going to cut it down, but the coppers can't convert and make the free throws. If they can make the free throw, this will be a tie ball game. They've missed, uh, I believe, about four, four or five free throws in a row. But again, uh, Green Wave had hurt himself when not taking care of the basketball in the last few seconds of the ball game. So Slaughter will get one more, and with 2.7 left in the half, North Texas will do their best to get a shot. Bell, well, as soon as I say that, they make no attempt, but they've got to be pretty happy. They go in at the intermission up three. Western, on the other hand, they have not shot particularly well. Haven't hit as many threes as they normally will. And so they don't feel all that bad being down three. 36-33, North Texas at the intermission. Halftime activities are coming up, so don't go away. Here in Bowling Green by 25 tonight, a three-point lead at the intermission, and Clem, I would argue that a lot of their improvements on the defensive side. On the defensive side, without a doubt, and also able to shoot the basketball. They're just actually being improved on both sides of the basketball, defensively and also offensively. You know, from the three, they're shooting 55%. The toppers, you know, they're only shooting 28%, and that's the difference in the basketball game. You know, you should reverse that. The toppers have been all year, have been an excellent three-point shooting ball club. Tonight, they can't seem to make a three-pointer. When we come back, we're going to talk a little football. Western Kentucky style. Stay tuned. We're here at halftime in Bowling Green. Career night in 20 minutes. Courtney Lee. Career night in 20 minutes. Courtney Lee has five early. That total obviously will jump quite a bit. And speaking of Courtney Lee, Clem is getting into the rarefied air with people like you. Well, you know, this young man here is without out that one of the finest players to ever play here at Western to wear, uh, you know, top of his uniform. So before we get through, if we stay another year, uh, he'll probably move up there close to Jim McDaniel. He'll probably surpass me in all-time scoring because he's got now play four years compared to about when we played only three years. So it's kind of misleading. These standings that you're looking at are simply overall record, most of which is non-conference play. For instance, this is the first conference game of the year for Western Kentucky. Over on the other side in the West, you've got North Texas, and they're doing pretty doggone well at seven and three. New Orleans got a conference victory a couple of days ago, a double, double, double overtime victory 
against North Texas. So that's a little bit of what's going on in the conference. When we come back, as they like to say it, it's showtime. Second half is coming up. This is the Hilltopper Sports Satellite Network on Fox College Sports. And Clem, kind of speculate for me. Let's start with North Texas. If you're Johnny Jones, what were you saying at halftime? Well, first of all, we've got to continue to take care of the basketball and continue to play the same way we played in the first half, do a little better job of taking care of the basketball, perhaps, and look inside a little more and just be consistent with the basketball, not force anything and turn it over. And Western, on the other hand, we got to keep, keep, keep taking the high percentage shot, not force anything, but then still, you know, don't panic because it's a three-point basketball game. we still got plenty of time to win this basketball game. Underway here in the second half. And wide open, Wooden obviously crossed up Western's defense for his fifth point. Again, that's a great job of Texas here, but North Texas State, but just doing a good job of having patience, moving the basketball, and, and getting the ball around the horn, and, uh, out of the double trap, and looking inside. Keith Wooden commits his second foul of the game. One of the things they fight down there, Denton, Texas, right outside of Dallas, you've got all that cowboy mania You've got the University of Texas. You've got all those schools, and they're fighting to get some of the attention down there. And this team may be good enough to get some of them. Well, they're playing right now, without a doubt. There's a nice drive of Courtney Lee taking the ball to basket. What do you got to do? Take the ball to basket on his hand, get his team back in the basketball game. My suspicion is you'll see more of that here in the second half. Courtney has seven. If it's tough and tight down the stretch, he'll have the ball an awful lot. They go down low again, and Quincy Williams Boy, they got free. They're doing a good job on that mismatch. The guy is direct from the diagonal cut to the basket, and they pass the ball to him. They're doing an excellent job of beating that, that trap, and that's where you beat it. Well, you said in the open that their big guys could give Western a lot of trouble. They give them a lot of trouble here, but the key, though, is being able to have to show patience and making the right pass and right cut to get the ball to the, to the man. That's a good feed by Rodgers. Joyner gets the layup. But it was Ty Rogers who set all that up. He set it up, but he made a nice hit fake there to go underneath to get the basket. But a shot on this side of the basket, you know, big guy probably would have blocked the shot. That was a good move on his part. So the lead is back to three. Wooden against a tough double team. Good ball movement. Watson buries the three. This kid has got great range on his jumper, and he's got 13. He's got 13. I tell you what, you don't have too many of those pure jump shooting in the country today, but man, watching him at night, he's really shooting that basketball. It's good to see we have some good jump shooting. He's one of them. Neither team had missed a shot in the second half until Brazelton missed, and North Texas up six, and here they come. One of the things they've been able to do with this lead, kind of take the crowd out of it a little bit. It has not been the energy-filled Diddle Arena that we're used to. But when the team come in and make shots like this here and get good stops on defense, it takes the home crowd out of it. And at night, they've been able to do that here. They Again. go down low with the shot clock inside of 10. Good double move, and then a great rejection by Evans. Now, North Texas will get the ball back, but Clem, they've got to realize they've only got two on the shot clock. Two seconds on the shot clock here, see if they're going to recognize that. But that was a great high-low pass there again. And again, it was a great defensive play there by Evans to block that shot, to stand down and stay at home and not to leave his feet and, and to block that shot. Well, they give him a new 35 on the clock, claiming that Western at some point had possession. Darren Horn did not agree with the call, and frankly, I didn't either. Stearns with a wild shot. Williams cleans up that mess, and he'll get a pair at the line. If I was Coach Horn, I'd have been on the floor protesting that one because I don't understand how they no, put, gave him right. a new 35-second clock there. That was a bad uh, officiating play there, I would think, a call there. I don't understand how he got a new clock. I never because to make that claim, you're saying that Western had possession, and that simply never happened. No, they never had possession of basketball, so that was a bad call there by the official. Quincy Williams missed that free throw, but this young man leading the Sun Belt Conference in field goal percentage at almost 65%. So when he shoots it, good things have been happening. Had a 13 rebound game Saturday night against New Orleans. 
in a losing cause, but in a great effort. Evans fouled on the floor. It's not a shooting foul. They go with Wooden, and that is his third. He's picked up two in a couple of minutes, and so Johnny Jones, realizing that, will get Wooden out of the game and get Harold Stewart in. They are five or six deep in pretty good big men. Big men are really playing well, yes. That's Lee, boy, again, he can't buy a roll tonight. He's been close on two or three that have not fallen, and Watson, again, from just beyond the Ohio border. Rogers buries the three. Rogers showing his range on his jump shot, too. I tell you what, if they get hot and, and uh, started making some of the three they missed in the first half, they'll stay right in this basketball game. It's only a four-point game, so it's going to be interesting down the stretch. That's the thing about it. For all of the good things North Texas has done, their lead is only four. Young, a long three. That was not a good shot. But there's Quincy Williams and a new 35. And Stearns is called for traveling. And Clem, for the first time tonight, you see them getting a little impatient. A little impatient there, because you know the pressure defense is still there. Now they kind of settle down and relax a little bit and not turn the ball over. And that's what's happened to them now. And the crowd's getting a little excited too. They're getting back in the game here. See top of getting to put a little run together and get the crowd into it. And uh, that'll help the toppers. But again, uh, uh, the young team here, speaking of young team, meaning Texas must slow it down a little bit and keep under control. Rodgers again. Ty Rodgers really helping tonight with 11. He's hit three different trays, and that is what he does best. Well, he can really shoot the basketball. Once he get his shoulders squared up and get his feet set, he can knock the jumper down, pick it from long range. He's kind of like Watson. He can shoot it deep, too. They got the double team. Stearns was able to get away. And then Evans with a big time rejection. Lee for the lead. And he'll go to the line for a pair. Well, that time Evans looked like he stepped up on a ladder. Climb, he climbed up and blocked that shot. That was a great block by Evans. When we come out of the break, Courtney Lee will go to the line, trying to give Western the lead. Battle tonight here in Bowling Green. George Plaster, Coach Clem Haskins, glad to have you with us all over the state of Kentucky and around the southern part of the United States. Ty Rogers, big three a moment ago, and then Clem, the freshman, Jeremy Evans, with a big time block. That's a big time block. I tell you what, he's kind of hung in the air there. The guy brought the ball to him. He went up with those big long arms and perfect timing. Just swapped that in the way. Coming off a big performance in Knoxville three days ago and kind of picking up where he left off. With more season and more weight, more strength, this young man will be quite a player. I tell you what, he had a bright future ahead of him. Put 20 more pounds on him, he's going to be a one the premier player in the country. Put 20 more on me, <laughs> and I'll be a blimp. <laughs> no comment. Thank you. Lee. Gives Western the lead. First time since very early on that Western has been able to say this. They've scored eight in a row to get this lead. Stearns, Wooden got away with the travel, missed it inside and got his own rebound. Keith Wooden has seven and the lead. Seesaws back and forth. Slaughter off a pick. Good feed down low. Evans couldn't find the handle, and Western very lucky to get the ball back. They're lucky to get the basketball back. That's a lot of times when you put the ball down low for big old guys, they're not used to going in that low and getting the basketball. But it was a great decision, really, uh, with uh, A.J. Slaughter, but that's what happened, young guy. They think everybody could pick those passes up. And in due time, he will, though. Lee, boy, you talk about aggressive. That one wouldn't go down, but it was done with authority. And Darren Horn screaming at one of the officials, wanting a foul that he didn't get. North Texas by one with the ball. They get a good look 
Wooden, the recipient, a great high-low, and Keith Wooden now has nine. Slaughter missed on a chance to tie. Lee missed inside, bodies all over the place, and Western will get a pair at the line. They get a pair. I tell you what, they really get up on that glass and chewing on the glass tonight. I tell you, Evan getting there and got a good look at it. Lee kept the ball alive, gave Evan a chance to get in and get a put back and get a foul. There are a lot of bodies flying around inside. Evans misses the free throw. That's one of the top is they've been shooting free throw extremely well this year. Tonight they've missed a lot of free throws. Make the free throws, they'd be up in this basketball game, but they missed a lot tonight. It cost them the lead. Evans hits one out of two. His sixth point in North Texas, two point lead in the ball. Wooden got great position again. You can count it in a foul. What he is doing is simply using those 245 pounds, and he's done a good job with the seal off. What to seal? That's it, size and strength right there at the low post. He's just sealing Evans off and using his bulk and getting a good wide base and then getting a good target inside and throwing the ball into him and just taking that and taking the ball to hold on. Clem, I like to call that a weight room play. That's a weight room play. It's just size and strength, you know, and there's no substitute for that. And that's something Evans will have in due time. Wooden has exploded here in the second half. Nine of his 12 have come in the last six minutes. North Texas back up five. Emerson didn't see it coming. Here comes Stearns. What a move to get the layup. He's got 16, and suddenly the lead is back up to seven. Darren Horn takes a good timeout right there. He doesn't want to get this margin any wider. Not really. It's a seven-point basketball game, but now you can see old Moe has switched to uh, North Texas side, and they're getting the ball inside, so they got to do something to correct that and do a better job. Look at that. Stearns with a beautiful fake here. Nice move there. Nice ball fake to go in for the layup. Well, you know, I said, you know, again, the basketball game, the size and, you know, the high-low situation going inside would be, would be the different in this basketball game here. I thought the size and strength of North Texas State would be the different in this basketball game. And so far, they've proven this. Only thing Western has to do, and they can offset this, they must make their outside shot, those threes, to offset this great size and strength of North Texas inside because West won't have anything to do with that because the Evans at the present time can't handle a big, strong guy like they have inside. And, and these big guys, Wim and Woody, are inside. They're just too big and strong. Well, here's a little bit of what we've got coming. Western, a very important two-game homestand right before Christmas tonight against this North Texas team. Then Friday night against the South Alabama squad that cost them the NCAA berth a year ago. And so how, how good a visit Santa brings to this team will be determined in the next 72 hours. Without a doubt, you know, a big payback time coming Friday night. South Al, you know, last year really cost them a, like you say, NCAA berth last year, but knocked them out in the finals of, of the Sun Belt Conference tournament last year. So now they, that's a big game come Friday night, but they must take care of business tonight. They got 30, 13 minutes and 44 seconds to get back on the winning track. There's plenty of time here on a seven point game, so just a couple buckets, a couple of uh, session, uh, ball possession down the court to get back in this basketball game. It'll be Western's ball when we resume. A lot of time it goes anybody can ball game yet. Uh, they got plenty of time to get back. I said they drop a couple long bombs here, three points, they're right back in the basketball game. Yeah, no need to panic. No need to panic. By any stretch. Emerson calling for the ball. Instead, it's Lee. Off the glass, nicely done. Courtney Lee on maybe not one of his most explosive nights, but he still has 11, so he's gone into double figures yeah. now, 12 games in a row, and we have a whistle, and it's somebody in white. 
I believe he's on Emerson uh, kind of. Yep. That's his second. And that is three team fouls in the half against Western. On the inbounds, Lee with the stronger hands. Takes it away from Stearns. Lee to the bucket. Leaving a wide open slaughter. Boy, he missed that one badly. Watson quickly into the front court. Stearns. Boy, they don't waste any time at all. And later in the game, they're going to have to be a little more patient. Siakam, good fake. And what's the call? I got blocked out, and it is on North Texas. North Texas State there. That was a nice high-low pass. Got it inside of Siakam, and that's a nice move on him. I like to see guys be aggressive like that. That's not time to kick it out. It's time to take it to the iron right there and try to draw a foul. He did. You know, go and try to get a three-point play, make the field goal. Go to the free throw line, make the bucket, or draw the foul. He drew the foul. Those of you seeing him for the first time, Siakam, a very high energy guy, a guy that plays with a lot of excitement. A lot of excitement, a lot of emotion. He's very aggressive. He's hard. He's tough. And he's in this type of game here tonight, he can have success. That's what you got to play against this type of team. Because if you don't have guys like that, you have no chance to beat a North Texas State. You got to have tough, aggressive people. Because they're a tough and aggressive group of guys. Every team needs one of those kind of players. If you don't have those type of guys, you're not going to make postseason play because everybody have these type of athletes playing today, and if you don't have them, you have no chance to advance. Western scored the last three to get within four, but there's Watson. This kid is a great outside shooter. Calvin Watson with 16, and boy, has he looked good this evening. Ty Rogers on a high hurdle over his own bench, and the turnover will take it back to North Texas. I look at their stat sheet, and on Calvin Watson, this year right at 40% from three, but tonight he has just been lights out. He lights out tonight. He, you know, there's certain players in certain arenas and that people like better, and uh, for the game, and. I was talking to SID, and he said something about he really likes this arena. And I believe tonight he proved oh. he likes shooting this arena for whatever reason. Nobody who has seen this, that tonight. Nobody who has seen this will, uh, will doubt that at all. I'll tell you another one he apparently likes. They played at Rice earlier this year, and he had 26 in that one. Williams, offensive rebound, still loose. Watson again, good again. Watson has 19, his team is up 10, and his buddy Rich Young took an elbow in the face. And we're going to have a timeout. It'll come with 11.53 left in the game. North Texas on the road, looking good, and leading by 10. <laughs> Lady Toppers, Western Kentucky's women's basketball team here tonight. And so far, they have not been the good luck charm because this kid, Calvin Watson, Clem, you're right. He just looks so comfortable and so natural. Five of eight tonight from three-point land. He's shooting lights out tonight. You know, right, you can see what great range. That's NBA range right there. You know, he's really shooting the ball. So comfortable tonight. It's unbelievable. They got to get out there and put a hand in his face and be a little more aggressive with him uh, with and without the basketball. Of course, you know, let him know that, hey, hey, uh, you just can't come in and shoot the lights out like this. <laughs> Western is down 10, and so they've got to start having some answers. Brazelton on a continuation, and they will count it. A little NBA kind of stuff there. Brazelton, his sixth point, and the foul is on Bell, and that is his fourth. That's, that's what you call an NBA continuation move there. And, and he shot. <laughs> Oh, nice drive by Brazelton. Say that one three times right. fast. Right. Brazelton completes the three-point play, so the lead is down to seven. And Western will put the full court pressure to work. Mangrum played well in the first half, but he's had a lot of help from his teammates down low. Those two stats right there that you see a little bit of why North Texas 
has the seven point lead. Boris Siakam, his third foul, and that's five team fouls on Western. Let me take that away. It was not Siakam. That was on was Courtney, uh, Lee. Courtney Lee. There's the double team on Mangrum. Williams, great position. And I think we're going to get an offensive foul, and we will. Good crashing of the boards, but Clem may be a little too aggressive. Too aggressive that time. They've really been getting an iron tonight, and that, one that time they went over three or four guys back and picked up an offensive foul. But they really have been aggressive. That's why they're leading the rebound here. I believe the edge here is like 34 to 20-something. That's why they're leading. They've been aggressive going to get, get to the board. Clem, this is a big foul on two fronts. It is Stearns' is fourth. It's the seventh team foul against North Texas. So from here on in, if Western can hit some free throws, it could be a big advantage for them. Be a big advantage to them, but also getting Stern with four fouls is a big plus for the toppers, and that really hurts uh, Greenway, too, getting him with four fouls because he's having an outstanding evening. Those of you watching this at home, kind of mark this one down. This kid, Evans, He's going to be a player. He's going to be an outstanding player. You know, just a matter of time, the more strength, the more weight. He's just going to be a good. Oh. Crowd wanted the foul and didn't get it. That was a no call there. But again, he did grab it on and pull him away. That should have been a call. Foul. North Texas up six as we approach the midway mark of the second half. Stearns. That, you know, I was about to say that's not the shot. Well, you know what? He's looking over at me saying, too bad. Too bad. I tell you, <laughs> when you got it going. He's got 19 into Hexford, I think. I know. And I'd say that was a great basketball player by Siakam there. He's taking the ball to hold and finding Evans for the pass. That was a great basketball player, one on one play. Nearly a steal, and it goes out of bounds off of Siakam. He's a high-energy guy. He plays as hard as any player in the country. I tell you what, he comes to play. And for the first time tonight, speaking of coming to play, the crowd making some noise. He's Stearns got, got away with the travel. Western gets the ball, and then Siakam takes the 30-second timeout. He got the crowd. He's getting the crowd back in the game, getting them pumped up, but with his fear, hustle, aggressive play. And so for the first time tonight, not only will North Texas have to battle Western, but they'll have to battle this crowd a little bit. But that's kind of what's been lacking in this game, Clem, is, is just that feeling of energy. Not that the effort hasn't been there, but you just haven't had that feeling. Have had that feeling here. Here's a guy who's getting him in the game. Here's a great pass from this part here, inside to Evans for a nice dunk. And he come back, get on the floor, and gets a jump ball here to get a turnover. Force a turnover for the Toppers. I tell you what, you pick the MVP, everybody want to look for the leading score. See, tonight, it has to be Siakam here. Just his hard, aggressive play on defense end, just his hustle getting loose ball, and just creating the energy that it takes to, to get his team to keep him in the basketball game so far. And here's a great test for Johnny Jones' team on the road. Lose in double overtime Saturday night at New Orleans. And you know they're going to get challenged down the stretch in this one. That's right. There's a great basketball play there. That's what coaches is all about there. Your job is to try to get the ball into your best player hand and get him a chance to get a shot. That time they cleared the side and gave him a uh, one-on-one move for Lee to make that bucket. Lee got his 13th point, but on the other end, the foul is on Western Kentucky. It is on Courtney Lee, and that's his third. They've got to be very careful that he doesn't get a fourth foul, let's say, in the next three or four minutes. Yeah, it's good to be aggressive, but you got to be smart now. You got to play under control now. You got to be aggressive, but you got to play under control, not commit foul at this stage of the game. Stearns has had more shots that I've thought have been poor shot selection that have gone in tonight. He has kind of thumbed his nose at what I think. He's got 20. He misses the second free throw. And he's going back to the line, and their good work on the glass is continuing to pay off. It's continuing to pay off, but that's what happened. Size and strength, they're just kind of pushing the toppers under the glass. That was a big, strong guy, just overpowering him and uh, getting the offensive board. Yeah. 
Stearns' 21st point. And now his 22nd. Back to an eight-point North Texas lead. Clock going to become a factor here soon. We're at 9.40 to play. There's plenty of time to go in the basketball game. There's not time to panic yet. Start taking quick, bad shots. Brazelton may have taken a quick one there. Still got to have good ball movement, get the high percentage shot, and get the ball into your shooter's hand. They tried to get it down low, and that time, Courtney Lee with good hands. He read, he read that perfect. Good bounce pass. Evans will get to the line, and you see on that play right there, Clem, Courtney Lee's a fine scorer, and we all know that, but he shows you two different pieces of his game, the defensive end and then this bounce pass. That's why he's a complete player. You know, he's just as good on the defense end as the offense end. He makes a great steal, but he comes down, he's such an unselfish player. He makes the right pass, pass off the break for Evans for a layup here because he drew a foul. He could have pulled up just as easy, shot that shot off that break, but he makes a pass. He's a very unselfish basketball player. Evans misses the free throw. And sometimes, you know, you coach and you would, as a coach, you, you'd like to see your veteran player perhaps pull up and shoot that shot and give Evans a chance to tip it in case you miss in that situation also. But he's such an unselfish guy, he made a good pass. Well, he missed a pair right there. And that cannot continue to happen because down the stretch, you've got to have all your free throws got to be able to take the cheap points and convert them. They was talking about the last ball game. They lost to uh, New Orleans, I believe, uh, yep. on the road, and they get beat because they couldn't make their free throws in two overtime. And you see here tonight, that's what's happened to the baseball pass. Stearns caught it. Look at the rejection. Evan shows you some of that great athletic ability. Rogers for three. And I Rogers with 14 to get it back within five. That was a great play right there. See, that's smart for me reading the break situation and going to your shooter. That's what a good guard is supposed to do. Take the ball to your best shooter in the break situation. And he did that just then. Boy, they got a great feed. Stearns to Williams, who answered with the flush. This is different in this ball club this year and a year ago. They put the ball in the right situation. It goes from a high-low situation and give the right guy a chance to make a bucket. And he comes up with a three-point play. Clem, I don't know when I have seen a team improve this much in, in eight months. I mean, a year ago, well, February of 2006 when they came in here, I wasn't the least bit impressed. But you have to be impressed today, but that's what good coaching oh, is all absolutely. about, and guys follow instruction, and guys also willing to take coaching, accept coaching. And that's what's happened tonight. These guys are doing a good job. They listen to coaching. They execute the game plan. Fundamental defensive mistake there. Nobody stopped the ball, and Brazelton not only got the bucket, but Western causes the turnover. Well, I can say the pressure. If you keep the pressure up, Six minutes going, excuse me, eight minutes going to ball game, six point game. Anything can happen yet. Rogers and Lee are your two big outside scores in this lineup that Darren Horn has. And Rogers' ability to knock down the three may be huge tonight. Lee starts a drive. Got blocked in a foul. Williams didn't like the call at all. He said he had all ball. He had a lot of ball, but he may have had some body. Well, he had the body and also had him on the wrist, I think, too. There's two guys there. You could probably call on either one of the guys. But again, the defense there, and they closed the door. And he's really making Lee work for his shot. And uh, that time he pulled up on two guys, and that was a good call by the officials. Lee didn't score his first points until about the seven minute mark of the first half and boy since then he's been racking him up pretty good in fact uh, they were telling me he has just moved into 
25th place all time at this school. He's tied Michael Fralix, who was one of Darren Horn's teammates in the early 90s. Lee passes Michael Fralix, who lives up in Fredonia, Kentucky, or up in that area somewhere. This is a good time to take a guy out and give him a blow right here. He just need to be out probably for a minute, so to catch his breath, there's plenty of time to go. They're playing hard. They're playing full court pressure defense. Give him a chance to get a blow to get back in here and finish this fast break game off. But you can't let it set too long because this, this is a big game. It's a must win for the top here to stay in the hunt. There's that man, and finally Watson, in kind of a shot, comes up with a big air ball. Boy, as good as he's been tonight, you just didn't expect that. Western down four. <laughs> Rogers misses, foul inside, and it's gonna be on Western, and that brings the crowd into a roar of disapproval. Dead ball timeout, 7.45 to play. Tough, tight ball game. North Texas on the road, leads it by four. Things to note as we go down the stretch run. First of all, North Texas with this four-point lead, part of the reason they have done a number on the boards to the tune of 40 to 25. Clem, the other thing that they've got to worry about, down the stretch, they've got three different players who have four fouls, those being Bell, Stearns, that's a big one, and the, uh, as I look at their uh, sheet, I can't find the third at the moment. It's Bell, Stearns, and it may well be Wooden. Young. It's Young who has Young. the fourth, okay? Right. And that's got to be a concern to Johnny Jones. This may really tax just how good is his bench. We that's may true. find that out tonight. Because you've got to be a consistent score. This game's not over yet. It's 68 to 64. They've got a consistent score. Remain the basketball game to win this game. you got to score to seven minutes and 45 seconds. There's going to be a lot of points scored by, by both teams before this game is over yet. Mangrum earns the bonus. And he misses the second free throw. So the lead is five with 7.40 to play. Crowd has gotten a lot more energy into this gym in the last two or three minutes. North Texas State come out with a, with a zone. The first time we've seen a zone tonight, they've been playing a man-to-man. -man. And because Western will have a real good outside shooter, so they decided to zone him this time. That's a good move by the coaching staff here to put him in a zone. Brazelton missed on a penetrating jumper. And looked like Mangrum stepped on the inline. So Western will get a new 35. Here's the one thing you can guarantee about their zone. As long as they play it, they're going to shade it toward Courtney Lee. Courtney but now Lee. Darren Horn kind of counters with that second good shooter. Well, I'm going to see what they're going to do. I'm going to see if Coach Jones is going to stay with the zone. Now you put Rodgers back in the game. See if he's going to stay in the zone or will they go back man. Looks like they're going to stay in the zone. Courtney, Courtney Lee. Lee split that zone. He split him, but he missed his, his runner. Boy, he has had no good roles tonight at all. Wooden, who's been big for them in the second half, against a good double team. Mangrum open, misses, and Lee was up a mile and got fouled. And he'll shoot a pair on the other end because now both teams are going to be in the double bonus. That's both teams. He went and got that rebound. I tell you what, that's what it's all about. You just got to go get it. He went and got that rebound. That's what I like about Lee. He really is tough. Mangum had a really good look. Had a great pass. Made the right decision. Got the double team on the baseline. He threw the diagonal pass. Had a good look. He just missed it. But Lee goes get this rebound over three guys. Big time rebound. Lee gets his 16th point. And this just in, a lot of the pressure down the stretch will be on this young man if Western is going to win. Lee missed it. Joyner had good position, and the officials knew it, and they spot the foul. It, when we see this replay, Clem, I don't know how he snuck into the lead position. He had great position. Well, I think the guy failed to block him out. He kind of went to sleep up there, and, and Joyner kind of Probably slipped inside of him. He got offensive rebound in position, and the guy kept coming over his shoulder and fouled him at the end. 
Joyner looks like a guy that the Tennessee Titans might want to use as a tight end. He is built like a truck. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what. It There's the, uh, the problem for Johnny Jones is down the stretch, he's going to lose one or two of these guys to foul trouble. And Joyner hits a pair, and the lead is down to two. And the key now, if they're getting foul trouble like this here, they've got to make free throw. The team can make the free throw in this last six minutes of the basketball game here will probably come out as a winner also. Free throw shooting is going to be critical. A lot of the crowd standing. Joyner and Calvin Watson, two guys that are really strong in the upper body. Watson got fouled by Joyner, who didn't like the call. Well, and apparently Darren didn't like it either. Yeah. <laughs> in that situation, he went up, and he lost the ball on the way up, and it looked like he got hit. And again, we were behind it. We couldn't really see it. It may happen here, but it looked like he kind of lose the basketball, and he may hit him on the elbow. We're not really sure on that. On the way up, it could have happened. Watson's only a 60% free throw shooter, but he looked great there. He's got 20 on the night. You've got a one-two punch of Stearns with 22, and now Watson with 21. And the key tonight is making these free throws down the stretch. That's two here, and the fans out there can keep track of who makes the free throws going to win this basketball game. Lee got fouled on the floor, and I think Stewart looking around going, give me a break. That's a ticky-tack foul. Let's see if it was Stewart. It was. It's his second. He didn't like that call at all. Remember, these are all two-shot fouls because both teams are in the double bonus. So far here, they're two for two. Both teams are two for two at free throw line here in the last six minutes plus to go in the basketball game. So it's going to be a free throw shooting here. Who can make the free throws going to win this basketball game? Sounds a little bit like the uh, Southern Illinois game we did <laughs> a few nights ago where every possession down the stretch simply matters. It matters, right? Every critical. These are two very good ball club, well-coached team. They're playing hard. They're executing both ends. They're being aggressive. And it just matters who can step up and make the big free throws when he gets fouled. That ball knocked out of bounds. Butch Joyner looks to me like he's bringing some energy to this. He's bringing some energy. He's been one of those key reserves for Coach Horn tonight also. Coming off that bench and doing a great job of getting a great play off the bench. Because he's big and strong. He's a senior. He can take the pounding. He knows how to play against these guys. He's a veteran guy. And a pretty big game like this right here. North Texas is led by as many as 10 here in the second half. They've had the long-range bombs from this guy, Calvin Watson, and they've had great play down low. Wooden may have gotten fouled. When the ball got loose, there were hands all over the place, and Wooden will indeed go to the line. Yeah, that's a tough one call right there. I bet they call it on Lee, being aggressive. And, 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 and Clem, that's Courtney's fourth, so he's got to be very careful he's because be, they need him. He's got to be very careful right now, but, you know, with five minutes going to ball game, six minutes really, 5.56. He needs to play, but he's got to learn to play with four fouls, and now he's got to play with his head, not his heart. Wooden at only 52% looked a whole lot better than that right there. You know, as a team, they, North Texas, only 63%, but they have looked better than that tonight. Well, it's crunch time now. They're stepping up making free throws at crunch time. They missed that one. But yeah. I'll tell you what, that's the first one they missed. They've hit about five out of six in the last few minutes, and it's crunch time. He's making big free throws. A three would tie it. A two would get Western within a point. They come back with a zone this time. A 3-2 zone. Brazelton for the tie. And Stewart with the backside rebound. Watson. Shot clock's already down to 20. Mangrum in the paint, missed a wide open shot, but then got his own rebound. 
Mangrum with five off the bench, and that was kind of a killer right there. Under five minutes to play in the Sun Belt Conference opener for Western Kentucky. Second conference game for North Texas. And there's a good feed to Joyner. Nice drive ever. Brazen got inside the defense. Did a nice job of penetrating down the gut and hitting Joyner on the baseline for a bucket. Butch Joyner with six off the bench. Both teams have gotten a lot of productivity off their benches. Bell left wide open underneath. Missed it, but there was a reason. Joyner commits his second. He grabbed him that time. That was a good foul. Prevent the bucket and see, make him go to free throw line and earn two. Well, Brazen got uh, rubbed off on that back cut there, but nice high screen by, uh, by North Texas State for a bucket there, and that was a great uh, job of executing their part. Oh, Bell got a really nice roll, the one that none of us get at the local Y. He's got six on the night, and Clem said it earlier, this one may well come down to free throws, and North Texas hitting their share, and they're back up by five. They're stepping at the free throw line, making shot. I'm sure the fans out there are keeping track of the free throw shooting. I believe I got about seven out of the last eight or six out of seven free throws here, and that's why they have a nice five-point lead at the present time. Calvin Watson committing his second foul, and these are costly fouls because they are all free throw shooting fouls. We may be here a while because I got a feeling you're going to see a lot of free throws down the stretch. Brazelton in double figures now with 10. Lee will come out now for how long? That's to be determined. He's got his four fouls, as I mentioned a minute ago, and Darren is going to sit him, I'm guessing, through the dead ball timeout and then get him back in there. That's, so, a, that's a good situation to be in. I mean, good time here, the dead ball situation, get a blow, and also want to get someone else a chance to play some defense here because they have the ball. So they may want to take a foul here, stop the clock, and they force a turnover. And Bell is called for traveling. And that's, so watch now. That's a good time Darren, to put him back yeah, in. Darren yes. will get him back in for offense, on right. the offensive end that's because right. you figure the, the much less probability of committing a foul on the offensive end. Right, you need some firepower in there. You got him on one wing and Roger on another wing, and of course you have Evans down low. Now she should uh, have some shooters there to kind of stretch the defense. Chance of knocks down a three here. I was about to say big possession. Heck, they're all big. Lee from 15, bingo. <laughs> Lee has 20, and that 10-point lead is down to one. Watson faces the trap, and now they'll set up their offense. And now almost everybody's standing here at Diddle Arena. Shot clock's down to 10. Wooden backed in too far. Offensive foul will go the other way. And we will go to the break, and when we come back, Western will be shooting for the lead. North Texas on the road. The most precarious of leads, the margin is one. North Texas lost eight of their last 10 in route to a 14-14 year. Clem, I don't know if they're gonna win tonight or not, but they are much improved. Now I want you to talk about what happened right there. Well, I tell you what, they put inside of the guy this time and Evan said, hey, I'm going to take one for the team tonight, Coach, but don't ask me to take a whole lot, but I'm going to take this one because it hurts too bad. But I tell you what, the freshman got to give him a lot of credit. He stood in that night and took that big blow from that big, strong guy, but it paid the price. You see he's still rubbing his shoulder and his back of his head, but they can ice it down tonight, and he'll be okay in about two hours later. He's a bean pole in this game. You've got a <laughs> lot of big bodies, and he has been battling five block shots. Western, a chance to take the lead. Well, they come back on man-to-man -man this time. They're going to man him. Lee taking it to the basket. There is Evans, and it was tipped around. Western had a second crack at it, and we're going to go the other way. And so far, it has been that kind of night. Every time they get close, 
It just hasn't happened. The ball just didn't dro won't drop, seemed like. They had a chance. They had about three cranks at that time, offense rebounds. And you got to give Evans credit. He's really battling in there and getting knocked down. You see his shoulder still hurting a little bit for taking that last charge, but give him credit. And Clem, with all of those players with four fouls on North Texas's side, it's Courtney Lee that is the first to foul out, and that is a huge loss. He, he leaves with a team-high 20, and now the question is, okay, who's the money man for Western from here on in? Because it's always been Lee. It's always been Lee, so now it's time for the freshman slaughter's cable making some big shots now. He's one of those guys that watch him in high school. He can step up and make big shots. And also, Rogers, a big time uh, three-point shooter. Those two guys can score points. And again, you have Brazen, and he's very good off the dribble. He can take the ball to the rack with some buckets. But the premium shooting will be Rogers and Slaughter. And they get a little help there as Williams misses the free throw. So there's no question some of the young guys out on the court will have to step up in these final three minutes. And Williams gives the Mean Green a two-point lead. This is why you play your bench so they can gain some experience because when you lose a key player, he must step up in critical time, be ready to play in prime time. And now this is prime time. Brazelton, what a move to tie the game. And that's what I expect Brazelton to do. That's what he's it's his strength right now, taking the ball to the basket and getting some shots. Not three-pointers because that's Slaughter and Rogers shoots a three. He needs to take it to the rack with a bucket or kick it back outside for the three-pointer. Boy, he showed big time quicks, and there's a palming call against North Texas. Now, let's go back to Brazelton for just a minute. Clem, from here at courtside, you really saw his quickness. Well, his quickness right there, every time he can take the ball and beat the perfect one on one, you got to get some people to come in and contain him with weak side help. That's why I said penetration. He can be good enough to take it hold. Right? Same thing here. He's facing off here. He's good enough to take the ball by people. And they say the same thing with AJ. He's good enough to get value for a shot. Slaughter. That's probably not the shot he wanted. And in frustration, he commits the foul. And Darren Horn yelling at him, saying, you got to be smarter than that. you got to be smarter than that. You know, what happened to young guys, he take a shot like that and miss it. Sometimes you get so angry, you look at him. Why do you take a bad shot? But also, next time he come down, he'll probably make a shot just like it. So, oh, my goodness, what a bad shot. Oh, oh good. We'll take that shot because he made it. Because he's capable of making those kind of shots. Harold Stewart only 59% from the free throw line. Part of the reason they lost a lot of close games a year ago. His first point of the night, and he gives his team the lead back. You got to be ready for a long rebound in case he missed this right here. Unless that shot come off, it could be a long rebound if he happened to miss it. Good. You guard there for the long rebound because if you don't, you, you will uh, give up an offense rebound. Well, you had that one called perfectly. Western a chance to take the lead. We've said that two or three times. Brazelton, that will not count. It's on the floor. It'll be a two-shot foul. And Clem, already we're seeing one of the guys who is stepping up with Courtney Lee gone. Brazelton twice has taken it to the hole, and this time he fouls Bell out of the game. Well, you know, that's okay. That's good. But see, there's still plenty of time in this basketball game. There's still two minutes to go. you got to be smart. You don't want to go and take a charge. Uh, you want to drive when there's opportunity there, but also you get a shot block. You don't forget about his shooter. Roger needs to get some looks at this basketball game. A good point guard know that Roger is the best shooter on the floor, needs to get some touches. Right now, he hasn't touched the basketball, so that's Brazel's responsibility to get Roger some looks down the stretch here. So I would be disappointed if Roger gets some good looks. Bell, the first of the mean green to exit stage right. Courtney Lee has already fouled out for Western. That one ties it at 78. I was just thinking what a confidence booster it would be for Western Kentucky if they win this without Courtney Lee down the stretch. Like Courtney down the stretch would be great, but there's one great thing about him. That's why he's played a lot of people. He's prepared to be in this situation here. So these guys have got a lot of quality minutes, and so they're ready to, for prime time because they've been playing all season. Johnny Jones will step in, take the timeout with 2.03 to play. 
Well, you, you look around, Clem, and what you see are, are two teams that have really gone to war tonight. And you're right, the benches allow both of these teams to do a lot of different things. And, and although Western certainly was really concerned when a Courtney, Courtney Lee fouls out, I don't care how it is, you're going to be concerned. But on North Texas's side, they really have not played with any caution with all those fouls. Not really. They're still playing. I think that's where you should play. Sometimes you get over cautious uh, because a purple guy got a couple of fouls and forget. So you got to still continue to play. Has a nice drive of Brazen there to finish that bucket there. Uh, so you can see he don't want to do try to do too much here in the last couple of minutes because he can get hurt his team too because guys like. Uh, like I said before, Rodgers need to be able to get offensively look at the basket. He's a, the best shooter on the court for the top. Of you never know when that possession arrow might be huge in these final two minutes. And it, that arrow favors Western Kentucky. Tie game with a minute 55 to play. George Plaster, Clem Haskins, glad to have all of you with us tonight. Williams into the middle. The shot is good and a foul. And Stearns continues to light it up. Well, I tell you what, they're doing a good job when Western come out in double team, is cutting the guy to the basket, the iron cut, and spreading the court, and throwing the ball inside. And that's how you beat that double team on the trap here. And they're just showing a lot of patience, and that's what coaching's all about. Coach Jones got his team well prepared to do that. Stearns misses the free throw. A huge miss, although he's got 24 for the night. Hilltoppers need a bucket to tie. A three would give them the lead. There it is. That's it. That's the shot. Well, you've been calling for it all night long. Rodgers has really had the stroke. He has 17, and it's the home team by one. That's what a guard is supposed to do. You know, he's supposed to set up your best shooter. That's what brings the job out there to get that ball to him, to give him some looks. Watson. Didn't draw the foul. Stern, that was an ill-timed shot. Young, offensive rebound, he'll go to the line. Bodies all over the place. And North Texas will shoot a pair. And that is the fifth foul against Boris Siakam. He leaves having scored three, so you've had Three players who have left the game, Siakam and Courtney Lee for Western Kentucky, and Ben Bell has fouled out for North Texas. If this game were to ever go to overtime, Clem can still play. A little slower than he used to be, may, may need to be a a half court game. Yeah, but, but half court game. Yeah. Let me set still. I don't know how to move. But right. six inches to my left, six to my right, and I'll be okay. <laughs> we'll get you a wheelchair if needed. <laughs> Young ties the game at 81. By the way, Ty Rogers with the 17 ties his career high. And forth we go. Rich Young's two free throws. And North Texas is up one, under a minute to play. Brazelton with penetration, and he drew the foul. And this young man is making things happen. He's making things happen. Like I say, though, he don't want to be over aggressive and, and force himself in anything here. So we got to really be careful. And Stearns fouls out of the game with a game high of 24, and that's a big loss for them. That's a big loss because there's a lot of time. Too many things can happen yet. It can go in overtime. And uh, they still have Watson on the floor, and I tell you, and I tell you, they still have some firepower. And, uh, of course, the top of doesn't firepower also. It's still an interesting game. It's anybody ball game yet, although top is down one, going free throw line to shoot two. Uh, it's still in one basketball game. But you know, all kidding aside, if this thing goes to overtime, then it is a bench war. Without a doubt. Because both of them, both teams have lost two players. And I've got news for you. 
they're going to be more before it's over. It's going to be more before it's over. If we go to overtime, we're going to lose at least one to three more players. These are all two-shot fouls. Brazelton ties the game. That one was a crier. Without a doubt. <laughs> He's got 15 on the night. Now he's got 16, and the pressure goes back to North Texas. They're down by a point. This time, West need to come up with a big defense stop. They don't need to foul here to stay within themselves here. And they stay down and play smart half-court defense here. Down to a two or three possession game at the most, and Johnny Jones will call timeout. Because I know Coach is going to try to do something here to try to get that ball inside. And if they don't have anything there, I'm sure he'll try to kick it outside for a wide open jumper. Yeah, let, let's talk about that for a minute. Because what he has had tonight, Wooden has been virtually in, unstoppable on the block. He seems like the first option. Watson seems like the kick it in, kick it back out option. And boy, that is hard to defend. Well, it's them, they can't, they don't have the size and strength to defend that. And if they show enough pace like it been, I'm sure what they're going to try to do is, is go inside out and some way set up some kind of play. And they may go with the old UCLA cut and shuffle cut. They may run a single or double off the high post and try to stick it inside with, uh, with one of those big guys posting up look down the gut uh, from the wing with a diagonal pass over the top and then throw it inside. So uh, we look for that. If they don't have that, then they may kick it outside for a wide open shot. So we hope watching them take that to do is all over. Clint, the, other, the other problem tonight let's face it there have not been many clean rebounds on the defensive end Western has had a struggle with this bunch they've got a lot of good tough low post people they got tough low post people aggressive people now you don't have Western don't have any bulk in at all see Aquas fouled out Lee's fouled out you're not in the basketball game it's only two physical player Western really has can play not in the basketball game so now they got to do a great job of getting their bodies in food now and do a good job boxing out keeping away from the basket because size and strength usually win these situations. North Texas has got 25 on the clock, so that's not a big factor at the moment. Mangrum back into the game. Watson being guarded man-to-man -man by Slaughter. Now there's the lob to Wooden. This is the play I, I, that's what I anticipated. Wooden, great position down low. Yeah, that's what I figured it would go with it. That's Keith smart. Wooden has 17. Brazelton quickly to the hole. Boy, I'll tell you what, down the stretch, Clem, he has been fearless. He is fearless driving the ball to the basket, but uh, that may have been a little too quick. But that's a good foul. They got a good drive. But you want to make sure that everybody in the right position to rebound the basketball for the tip in if you're not if you missed that. Rich Young, the latest of the foul out of the game club. He fouls out having scored two. And Tyrone Brazelton, and, and remember what, what goes on here, you see this delay. The team that has the player foul out, what do they got, 30 seconds? And what ends up happening, both teams essentially use it as a mini timeout. As a mini timeout, they just bring your players over and talk to them at that time. That's what Coach Horn is doing and they're talking to his players. Not only are you talking about, you got to get your defense set now. What you going to do defensively if you make both free throws? What you going to do if you miss a free throw? Okay, so you're talking about those situations uh, for your team. Uh, uh, speaking of the top. I brought up earlier, Clem, who would step up when Courtney Lee fouled out? Well, we've got the answer. Tyrone Brazelton. North Texas has not been able to do a thing with him. They have not been able to contain him. You know, he's been driving and and so they got it, and he's going to his right each time. So I'm figuring if it happened to go on overtime, I'm sure they would make that adjustment and do something about that. 12 of his 16 since the intermission. That one ties it. Guards, you can't win playing this game basketball anymore without guards. Good guards, you got to have guards. They just are so important in winning and losing. Brazelton hits a pair. That's his career high. And now we may be down to a final possession. North Texas has led most of the game down one 
with 10 seconds to play, and they'll take a timeout. Johnny Jones calls it with 9.5. And Clem, it's nail-biting time. It's nail-biting time at the present time here, I tell you. we got to come out now, have another set play, and, and I tell you, I'm sure they're going to try to do the same thing they did before, find a way to, to stick that ball on the block to the big guy. And um, uh, the first option is trying to go inside with it. You're talking about Keith Wooden. He has scored 12 of his 15 points here in the second half, and it's been very obvious at the intermission that Johnny Jones made a real emphasis to say, look, we've got a height advantage. Let's ram it down their throat. And that's what they've been doing. Well, that's what it's all about. You know, talking about you make an adjustment, and when you have size, you have strength, and, you know, if, if you when you're paying your salary, the coaches, if it's a real job, is take advantage of that. And the advantage is take the ball inside to your to that to your man, and, that, and that's Wooden here for North Texas. Now, Darren Horn took a timeout. It, was there anything he could see in that alignment that could help him at all? Well, I'm sure, but you know, they called it pretty quick, you know, before the referee even got over here. So they may have called it a little bit too quick. Uh, I don't think the referee even set to be to um, hand the ball to him. I don't know what the. They would even have the play set up, to be honest with you. So they actually call it so quick before the official have a chance to set the, the uh, ball in the player's hand. But again, uh, they may have been able to spot something we didn't see. Just remember in the game reset that the possession arrow favors Western. You never know where that might be the difference. You can see here they line up here. They're going on a diagonal screen here and try to throw that ball right down the gut. Watson to Williams. Wooden got right inside as we figured they would yeah, try. Now Western. Coast coast. He should go coast to coast. Trying to go for the win. No good. North Texas comes into Bowling Green and they escape with a one point victory. Keith Wooden got the bucket with five seconds left. Clem, it was a heck of a game. And I'll tell you what, North Texas a whole lot better than a year ago. But a lot better than a year ago, and that's how you build your program. Coach Jones has really built his program there, and they a team had to be reckoned with in the Southern Conference this season. So North Texas gets a huge road victory. They go to one and one in the conference. Eight and three overall. Western falls to eight and four, and they've got a big one on Friday night against the defending champion, South Alabama. For Clem Haskins and for our entire crew, this is George Plaster. Thanks for being with us. North Texas wins it by one.